Hello everyone, welcome to the second video of our series of playlist in which we will discuss some important points related to the job interviews, exam questions and similarly these points will be important and useful for the side engineers who are already doing jobs. So this is the second video of our series. I already uploaded the first video and in today's video we will discuss three important points. The first point is that the minimum diameter of a bar used in column is 12 millimeters. In last video we have discussed the minimum diameter for slabs, right? And in today's video we are discussing about the minimum diameter which is allowed to be used in the columns is 12 millimeters. So all structural structure engineer recommends 12 millimeter diameter of the uh, reinforcement bar as minimum diameter of the bar of a column. So we need to remember this 12 mm is the minimum diameter of the bar which is allowed to be used. So the next point is minimum number of bars. Previous was the minimum diameter of the bar which is allowed to be used in a column that was 12 millimeters. Then the next point is minimum number of bars. We can have a square shape column or we can have a rectangular shape column or we can have a circular shape column. So on the basis of the shape, the criteria for minimum number of bars varies. Sorry. For square and rectangular columns, the minimum number of bars we can use are four. We can use four bars in a square or a rectangular column. And for circular columns, the number of minimum bars is six. If you have a circular column, then you can use six bars as minimum number. You can't go below six. You can't use five or four bars in a circular column. So this is a sort of question which is usually asked by interviewers during interview or you can get this question in any sort of exam too. And the next point and the last point for in today's video is very important actually. This is repeatedly asked question uh, in exams and interviews. So as we know that we have various types of beams but particularly we have, we have two important types of beams. One of them is simply supported beam and other is cantilever beam. Cantilever beam has support on one side and simply supported beam has supports on both sides. So in case of cantilever beam, the tension zone is up and compression zone is below cantilever beam. When you are talking about cantilever beam, the compression zone will be at the bottom region and the tension will be at the top. Similarly, when you go to the simply supported beam, the compression will be on upper side and the tension will be on the lower side of the beam. Why this happens? This happens because of the, uh, the point or the position where load applies. In simply supported beam, the load applies at the center of the beam, while in the cantilever beam, the load actually applies at the end or uh, far corner of the cantilever beam. As you can see in this figure, so you need to differentiate this. In cantilever beam, the tension is in uh, upper side, while in simply supported beam, on the upper side there will be compression. And on the bottom side, there will be tension in the simply supported beam. And in case of cantilever beam, on the bottom side, there will be compression. So this is very important point. You can be asked in any sort of interview related to civil engineering job. So you need to keep this in mind. All the best wishes. See you guys in the next video with some other important points.